I've been trying to avoid acknowledging him, but at this point in time, that's just not possible anymore. The man in the trench coat. The investigative journalist. He finally made his move. For months now, he's been obsessed with investigating Akademi. But the headmaster has always refused him entry into the school. Up until now, that was enough to stop him. But recently, he found a loophole. Apparently, he's had an apprentice for a while now. She's a junior detective. And a former student of Akademi. Back when she was attending school here, she did something extraordinary. She solved a high-profile murder mystery that the police were struggling with. That accomplishment turned her into a national celebrity almost overnight. There was nothing more for her to gain from remaining enrolled in Akademi, so... She left without graduating, and quickly began a career as a junior detective. And now, one year later, she's back. She claims that she's here to finish her degree. But I can tell that there's more to the story than that. Her mentor, that journalist, is firmly determined to investigate Akademi. Clearly, he must have asked his apprentice to return here to be his eyes and ears. The two of them have been interviewing students, and they've learned something. Things tend to happen to girls who have a crush on a certain boy at school. My senpai. He's become a person of interest to them. And now... That junior detective girl is investigating him. Following him everywhere, talking to him all the time. And lately, she's been getting a bit too friendly with him. It's enough to make my blood boil. But, as much as I would love to sink a knife into her heart, a violent approach might be a bad decision this time around. She's convinced a bunch of students to patrol the hallways with cameras. Right now, the slightest mistake could cost me everything. This girl. She's probably the most dangerous enemy I've faced so far. But, if I could somehow manage to befriend her, and put her in debt to me, she could be a powerful ally.
Past 11 weeks have challenged me in every way possible. 
but despite everything, I've still managed to defeat every one of my adversaries. These experiences have made me stronger, braver. I think I finally found the courage to talk to him, to tell him how I feel. When I confess my feelings to him, it has to be special. It has to be perfect. I don't believe in the myth about the cherry tree behind the school. But I can't think of any place more appropriate for my confession. Today. I'm going to tell him today. Senpai, please accept my feelings. It's happening. It's really happening. Today is the day. The day I finally tell him how I feel. It's taken so long. But now I'm ready. I'm ready to- Stop right there, Ryoba Aishi. What? It's you. You are under arrest on suspicion of the murder of Sumirei Satozaki 11 weeks ago. And your connection to at least one other person's disappearance. Wait, please! There must be some mistake. I had nothing to do with- Oh no. You're not going to sweet talk your way out of this one. Your innocent schoolgirl act won't save you this time. What evidence do you even have? I've been questioning your classmates over the past couple of months. They've noticed a pattern in your behavior. That boy over there. The one under the tree. You've shown a keen interest in any girl who developed feelings for him. And some of those girls have gone missing. <laughs> How convenient for you. What's happening here is obvious. You're eliminating any girl who tries to take that boy away from you. And Sumire was your first victim. No! I would never hurt anyone! I swear! I'm innocent! You have to believe me! Save it for the judge. Cuff her, boys. On April 1st, Ryoba Aishi put a note into the locker of Sumire Saitozaki. After reading this note, Sumire went to the East Third Floor Girls Restroom. That was the last time anyone ever saw Sumire. After she was reported missing, police investigated Akademi for clues. In the East Third Floor Girls Restroom, they found some of Sumire's blood. Shortly before Sumire went missing, Ryoba Aishi was spotted carrying a knife and walking in the direction of the East Third Floor Girls' Restroom. Later, she was seen carrying a large garbage bag towards the school incinerator. All of this information came from Ui Tunisu, a student at Akademi, who was interviewed by the police the day after Sumire's disappearance. It's obvious what happened to Sumire. Ryoba Aishi killed her in the bathroom with a knife, stuffed her in a garbage bag, and carried her to the incinerator, where she burned all of the evidence. Do you deny any of this, Ryoba Aishi? I did not kill Sumire Saitozaki. It's true that I put a note in her locker and spoke with her in the bathroom, but I simply wanted to discuss a personal matter with her. Nothing more. What about the knife? I noticed that one of the knives in the home economics room was missing. It turned out that someone had brought the knife to the cooking club by mistake. So, I simply took it from the cooking club and put it back in its rightful place. And the garbage bag? How do you explain that? I love my school. I can't stand to see trash and garbage piling up everywhere. I do my part to keep the school clean, just like everyone else does. <laughs> you always have a convenient explanation for everything. Don't you? Do you really think anyone in this courtroom is going to believe your obvious lies? <sighs> Mr. Journalist, there are a number of problems with your theory. First of all, 
You're accusing me of murder, but you don't actually have any proof that Sumire is dead. She is still considered missing, after all. I think she simply ran away because of the stress of studying at an elite school. I pray that she is alive and well and will return to us one day. You think I killed Sumire because of three facts. I spoke to her, I held a knife, and I burned some trash. However, none of these things are grounds for suspicion. Every day at school, dozens of students talk to each other, touch objects that could be used as weapons, and carry garbage bags to the incinerator. There was nothing unusual or suspicious about my behavior. You know, I think I finally figured out what's going on here, Mr. Journalist. Your apprentice, Sonoko Sakanoe, became a celebrity after she stopped a killer. You're desperate to pin a crime on me because you want to be a celebrity too. The only reason that any of us are in this courtroom today is because you're deeply insecure that your apprentice has accomplished more than you. Order! Order in the court! <laughs> it's true that there is no smoking gun evidence linking you directly to a murder. However, with that said, over the past 11 weeks, you have demonstrated behavior that is suspicious, if not outright incriminating. Your classmates have testified that you've been stalking a certain boy at school, following him when he goes shopping, following him when he walks home. By all accounts, you're absolutely obsessed with this boy. Furthermore, every time a girl begins to show signs of interest in him, Something always happens that removes the girl from his life. You can't possibly expect anyone to believe that these facts are mere coincidence. Clearly, you are sabotaging the boy's love life in order to keep him single. And who else had a crush on that boy? That's right. Sumire Saitozaki. You've been eliminating every girl who comes between you and that boy. And Sumire was your first victim. Order! I said order! Enough conjecture. Let's go over the facts. Taking all of the facts into consideration, it is clear, beyond any shadow of a doubt, that Ryoba Aishi is innocent of all charges. A murderous schoolgirl who kills in the name of love. It was a novel concept. Newspapers realized it would get sales. TV stations realized it would boost ratings. It didn't take long for the news of my murder trial to spread across the entire nation. I've never seen an event get that much coverage before. It was a real media circus. And now, everyone in the country knows my name and face. Even worse, they all know how I feel about my senpai. Oh, this is my worst nightmare.
I didn't want him to learn about me like this. I wanted our first meeting to be special. Perfect. Exactly like in my dreams. But now, that can never happen. He'll never be able to see me as a cute underclassman who has a crush on him. He'll only be able to see me as that girl who was accused of murder on national TV. If I confess my love to him now, I doubt he'll want anything to do with me. Even though I was declared innocent, there will always be doubts in his mind. That stupid journalist ruined absolutely everything. There's nothing I want more than to rip his heart out and shove it down his throat. But spilling any blood right now would only attract more attention. There are too many eyes on me right now. I have to lay low for a while. Revenge isn't an option at this point in time. But I'll never forget what that man did. I won't be able to have a romantic confession underneath a cherry tree. But this isn't over yet. I still have one option remaining. My last resort. It's unfortunate that things turned out like this. But I was left with no other choice. I would have been crushed if he rejected me. So, I had to take away the option. Our relationship might be awkward for a little while, but we'll get through it together. After all, I know all of his likes and dislikes. <laughs> I'm sure he'll warm up to me soon. Ah, <sighs> There's a part of me that wonders, what was the point of all the hard work I just did if I was just going to kidnap him in the end? But, despite the way things turned out... I don't think the past eleven weeks were a waste at all. I learned so many new things and gained so many new skills. I'm sure I'll be able to find a way to put all of my knowledge and talents to good use. And one day, I can pass down everything I know to my son or daughter. There's still so much to look forward to. Oh